In the last video, part three, you saw Israel receiving the land Elohim promised to them. They conquered much of the land of Canaan and Elohim was making his great name known. They were blessed as long as they followed Elohim, his law and his statutes, and did not bow to any of the other nation's gods. They did not follow him completely and were punished many times for their disobedience. We should use part three to understand Elohim in a greater way. He does not just ignore our sin and let us live without consequence. If it seems that way, it's because we are blessed to live in the age of grace. The consequence of our sins are not truly realized, but this grace will not be granted forever. Take note of how he reacts to our disobedience and sins. But moving on with the story takes us into much of the years of abundance for Israel. But as they reach what seems to be the height of their glory, this story takes a turn. Use this history in understanding the story of Elohim's chosen people while understanding how Elohim responds to sin, while also understanding the true purpose of Israel and the purpose for Messiah. Let's begin. So Israel is now set up in their land. The 12 tribes have had their lands divided and distributed according to the Torah, the law of Moses. God had established judges who did not rule Israel, but led Israel in proper worship of Elohim. The last judge was Samuel, who was also a prophet. He was from the tribe of Ephraim. Samuel heard from Elohim from a child. As he grew, Elohim was with him, and all of Israel knew Samuel as a prophet of Elohim. Samuel spoke to all the houses of Israel and said, If you do return to Elohim with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods as Ashtoreth from among you and prepare your hearts to Elohim and serve him only he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtoreth and served Elohim only. As Samuel got older, he made his sons Joel and Abijah judges over Israel. His sons did not walk in his ways. They turned aside for dishonest gain, took bribes, and perverted justice. Sounds like many modern day pastors of today, I'd say. Either way, Israel gathered and said to Samuel, Look, you're older, and your sons don't walk in your ways. Make us a king to judge us like all the other nations. Israel wanted to be like the other nations that had a king, a king that judged them and spoke for all of them to the other nations. Samuel told Elohim of their request. Elohim told Samuel, Heed the voice of the people and all they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. So listen to them, but you shall soundly forewarn them and show them the behavior of the king who will reign over them. Elohim told them about what would happen if they had a king. He said many things. You can find them in 1 Samuel chapter 8. But he lastly said, you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves and Elohim will not hear you in that day. But Israel, being a stubborn people, refused to obey Samuel and his warning. They said they wanted a king. They wanted to be like all the other nations. Their king would judge them and go before them and fight their battles. Very much like people today don't want to be led by the Holy Spirit or want their pastors to be their leaders and judges over their lives, making the pastor the final word, though they have the final word in their hand. So Yahweh said, heed their voice and make them a king. Yahweh sent Saul from the tribe of Benjamin to be the first king of Israel. Yahweh told Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all kingdoms and from those who oppressed you. But you have today rejected me, who himself saved you from all your adversities and your tribulations. And you have said to him, No, set a king over us. Now therefore, present yourselves before Yahweh by your tribes and by your clans. So Saul was the first king of Israel and he started out righteous. He fought fierce wars for Israel against the Philistines. Saul made a big mistake though. Yahweh commanded Saul to attack the Amalekites. He wanted to punish them for what Amalek did to Israel, specifically when they ambushed Israel from their exodus of Egypt. So Saul was to go and attack Amalek and destroy all they had and not spare anyone or anything. Now Saul did attack the Amalekites, but he did not destroy everything. He chose for himself the things he wanted to keep from their possessions. Big mistake, Saul. 
Later, Samuel came to Saul and said, When you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the soil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? So Saul said, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission of which the Lord sent me and brought back Agag, king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the plunder, sheep and oxen, the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. So Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. So Saul lost his anointing, and now will be replaced. Samuel did not go see Saul again until his death. So Samuel was sent to find the next king. He was sent to the tribe of Judah and into the home of Jesse. And out of Jesse's many sons, the smallest one, David, was chosen. He would be the future king. One of the most famous stories of David was when he slayed the giant Goliath with a rock and sling. He told Goliath, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day Elohim will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. He showed his trust in Elohim to Israel with that moment, but he did not become the king from that action. Saul knew he would be replaced. He knew it would be David. So he became afraid of David because Elohim was obviously with him and Elohim departed from Saul. So Saul removed David from his presence and made David a captain over a thousand. David performed well and wisely. All of Israel loved David because he went and fought for him. Please note, it's important to understand David because he is what Israel expected their Messiah to be like when they were in captivity by Rome. They expected a King David and they still expect one. Only when they get him, he'll lead them to hell. That goes for true Israel and the false one. Back to the story. Saul wanted to kill David. He told his son Jonathan of his desire, but Jonathan was a great friend of David. He told David that Saul wanted to kill him. He told David many times of Saul's different plans and allowed David to hide. Jonathan even told him, Do not fear, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel. And the two of them, both David and Jonathan, made a covenant before the Lord. So it was one day that Saul was delivered to David. But David showed mercy and did not slay Saul. From this, Saul truly knew David was to be king, but he still desired to kill him. David hid from Saul in the land of the Philistines for a little over a year. Then it was that Saul led Israel to fight against the Philistines. In this battle, Saul and his sons died. After Saul's death, David went back to Judah and was declared king over Judah. But Ishbosheth, another son of Saul, was made king over the other tribes of Israel. And at this time, the kingdom of Israel was divided. There was Israel and Judah. Only Judah followed David after the death of Saul. And there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David grew stronger and stronger while the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. Long story short, Ishbosheth was delivered to David and the war ended and David was anointed king over Israel and Judah and they now were a united kingdom. David lived in Jerusalem and this was basically the capital of Israel. Now David was a good king. He ruled over Israel justly. Elohim spoke to David through his prophet Nathan and told David, you will build a house for me to dwell in. I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and have made you a great name, like the name of the great men who are on the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, 
I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your body and will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. David was king during a time of war. He had many conquests. 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1 through 13 shows all of David's conquests. Now David was a good king, but he was not perfect. And he made a great mistake, and it was because of a woman. This seems to be where many men make their mistakes. But David fell for a woman, Bathsheba, though she was already married. He lay with her, and she became pregnant with his child. He dealt with this situation by sending her husband Uriah to battle and saw to it he died in battle though not from a sword of Israel. He thought he was being slick, and no one would be the wiser of his scheme. But Elohim saw and was against David for this. Again, through his prophet Nathan, Elohim told David, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah, the Hittite, with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife, and you have killed him with the sword of the people of Amnon, now therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house. The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. However, the child who is born to you shall surely die. And the child of Bathsheba and David did die. David comforted Bathsheba, and she bore him another son, Solomon. Elohim promised that Solomon would be the next king of Israel. So the prophecy of the uprising in David's house came true. It came from his son Absalom. Absalom killed his brother Amnon because Amnon raped Absalom's virgin sister Tamar. David was very mad with Absalom, and this eventually led to Absalom's conspiring against David. Absalom promoted rebellion against Israel to the point that they came against David. The heart of the men of Israel went with Absalom. So David fled Jerusalem, and there was an upheaval in Israel between David and his son Absalom. Obviously, Absalom did not succeed, and he was killed. David mourns him, feeling these things happen because of his iniquities. So David punished the defectors who went against him, and Israel was restored. David's reign continued over all of Israel. So as David got older, his son Adonijah exalted himself and said he would be king. The prophet Nathan in Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, went to David to remind David about the promise of Elohim. David remembered and anointed Solomon as king over Israel and Judah. He blessed Solomon, and Solomon was a new ruler to succeed David. Solomon was the new king. Now it's good to stop here because there's a lot to Solomon and what happens after him. So from this point, it's important to note that 1. Israel rejected God and wanted to be like all the other nations. Two, Saul was the first king, but because of his disobedience, he was removed. Three, David of the tribe of Judah became the next king of Israel. Four, David was not perfect and had problems as king. Five, the children of Israel that rejected Yahshua did so because they were expecting another seed of Judah very much like David. Six, Elohim is very specific and what he expects from us, and we should follow it before the age of grace runs out. The story of Saul and King David are important because it really highlights how Israel became known amongst the rest of the world. King David was a very powerful and respected king, and through him the rest of the world became blessed. In order to go any further, in the next video, you'll need to learn about the true enemy. You can't defeat him if you don't understand him, and in order to understand religion, you really need to grasp him and everything after will have effects by him. So you need to understand why. Because he used much of this history to bring about his own rebellion. I hope this sparks a desire for you to read Elohim's word on your own. This part specifically came from the two books of Samuel. I hope this blesses you. I love you all.